All right, Turbo Repo is a high-performance build system for JavaScript and TypeScript. Okay, hold on. <coughs> I have to get that out of my mouth, you know? I, I said JavaScript, and, and just right when you say that, I immediately tasted, like, stale chips. It was like, ugh, like they're kind of wet. It's disgusting. I don't want anything to do with it. We're reimagining build systems, taking inspiration from tools like Buck and Basil. Bazel. Is it Bazel or is it Basil? Is it Bazel? I tasted regret mostly. It's what the form of regret tastes like, is eating stale chips at night in your bed. Okay? That is the feel. Or is the, is the taste of regret. Bazel. Bazel. Okay, it's Bazel. Uh, to make it accessible for everyone. At the heart of Turbo Repo is a very simple idea. Never do the same work twice. I like that. We accomplish this through incremental builds, parallel execution, and remote caching. Parallel execution is not doing the same work twice. Just throwing that out there, but I like I like where this is going. I like what's happening in. NPM run build, yeah. NPM run build, cached, got them. Uh, NPM run build, cached, got them. Wait, why is this one faster than these two? Oh, 38 minutes and 9 seconds. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was 38 milliseconds. <laughs> uh, as usage has grown and our product needs uh, have shifted, we decided to start incremental migration from Go to Rust in the 1.7 version. In this article, you'll learn about our motivations for this migration and the problems we are finding Rust solves for our team. It's interesting. The original dis uh, decision for Turbo Repo to use Go followed in the footsteps of ES Build. As the JavaScript bundler written in Go, ES Build is fast and avoids much of the initialization overhead of Node.js. Additionally, Go's developer experience is tailored for iteration, something we needed as we learned more and more about what developers wanted from Turbo. Okay. Okay, that seems reasonable. I think that's a reasonable choice. Uh, in the early days of Turbo Repo, these properties of Go gave us exactly what we needed for the project to be successful. However, as Turbo Repo code base has scaled and merged with Turbo Pack, Go has begun to underserve both our core team and users in the area that matters most to Turbo. All right, comparing Go and Rust. Uh, we've been working on several other migrations lately and have enjoyed opportunity to refine our approach. Doing a mock migration for the BBC's open source front end from React to Next.js, dogfooding the Next.js 13 app router for Vercel.com. I actually think this is one of the best ways to develop anything right here. If you can dogfood your own app, this is the best way to do it. Dogfooding, for those that don't know, it just means that you are building something that you use. Uh, and so that's a very important uh, you know, facet because a lot of times people build products they don't use themselves. And there is something really bad about that. <clears throat> in any major technical migration, there's a lot to, uh, to consider, and the decision shouldn't be taken lightly. In particular, a language migration is quite demanding, asking you to weigh di dimensions like the strengths, weaknesses, and community of a given language according to your specific business and technical context. In our case, we need to compare Go and Rust to figure out which language is going to serve us best. Okay, excited. I'm excited. Um, you've never used dog fooding, really? People never use dog fooding? Dog fooding is like a total normal term. Is this one of those things that uh, programmers say that people just don't ever say? Is that what's happening right now? Never. Heard. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. I gotta do a poll. I'm too. I'm too excited to know the answer to this. Real talk. How many people use the term dog fooding? Uh, heard of dog food before today? Yes. No. There you go. I want to actually know because this is interesting. This is a term I use all the time. Oh, the D-Man dies! Ah! I'm actually, I, I'm personally shocked that this exists. That 64% have never heard this. You think I'm getting trolled by the poll? Instructions is not clear. Dog ate my keypad. Oh, shit. Okay, we're reading this. Shut up! Adi let's see. Additionally, Go favors simplicity over expressiveness as a side effect of that decision means uh, more errors are caught at runtime where other languages might catch them at compilation. With a service running in a data center, you can roll back, fix, and roll forward at your convenience. But when building software that users install, the cost of each mistake is higher. Absolutely. I, this is a great, this is great call out right here. I love this kind of thought process because it really changes how you approach software is how easily can you revert. Uh, for us, it's worth using tools that prioritize upfront correctness. We fully recognize the mismatch of Go's priorities and what we're prioritizing as a problem at, that we've created for ourselves. Yeah, the nice part about Go is that it has a much more complete type, type system than TypeScript, but it still uses a bunch of this interfacing for everything. And that 
is problematic in of itself. The Rust language and community has prioritized correctness over API abstractions, a trade-off we care about. Uh, a lot about when working with process management, file system, other low-level OS concepts, shipping software to our users' machines. Love this. This is all beautiful. This is all beautiful. This means additional complexity has surfaced into our code base, but it's necessary complexity for the problem we're trying to solve. I wonder if it is tr technically necessary, because if you're trying to solve this with another language, how hard is it? I find myself battling so many little errors that I don't really realize are happening because I'm having to use TypeScript in some ways. You know what I mean? Rust type system and safe features allow us to put guardrails in places our code base where we need them. The language's expressiveness allows our developers to encode constraints that catch errors at compile time rather than GitHub issues. I like it. I like that. Go's performance for simplicity at the file system was created uh, creating problems for us when it came to file permissions. Absolutely. Go lets uh, users set Unix-style file permissions code. A uh, short number that describe uh, who can read the file. Yep, you can do a... Uh, you can do a little octal, right? little zero leading number, right? While this sounds convenient, this abstraction does not work across platforms. Windows doesn't actually have a precise concept of file permissions. Surprise, surprise, Windows sucks. Uh, Go ends up allowing us to set a file permission code on Windows, even when doing so will have no effect. So one thing I like to do personally is just never support f Windows. Okay, it's that simple. Use a Unix-like system or get the f out of here! Just get out of here! Stop! Go use Windows for gaming, okay? Windows for gaming is great. I love it. Okay? I love it. All my software I write at Netflix, I have zero support for Windows. Okay? Zero support for Windows. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Hey, most people in here are a bunch of Arch drive, Arch users anyway, so it's not like I'm really offending anyone. I'm sorry for the normies that are using Windows. WSL2 is great! Okay, tough guy. I get it. WSL2 is great. Alright, but I do use Windows for gaming and for streaming. So I'm actually, this is a streaming computer, the one I'm looking at right now, watching your little text run by. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. On contrast, a robust explicitness in this area not only made things simpler for us, but also more correct. If you want to set file permissions code in Rust, you'll have to explicitly annotate the code as Unix only. If you don't, the code won't even compile on Windows. This surfacing of complexity help us... Un Dude, I love this. Tell me this is not amazing about Rust. Right? Like, this is a really important point that I think that people don't quite catch which is that like these type of little catches make your life so much easier despite the fact that they're kind of a pain in the ass to always have to deal with. You just don't have to deal with them as much. And this is really important facet of, uh, of Russ, I think. Rust has a fantastic ecosystem of high-quality open-source crates. Absolutely, they have clear focus on what they care about. An example of where to benefit from this alignment is when we have the interface with native libraries written in C or C++. As we built out Turbo Repo, we've started to rely more often on native C packages like Z-Stud. Z <laughs> the stud, uh, a, a library that helps us compress our cache files. Interopting uh, with these native libraries in Go requires us to use CGO, which switches from pure Go toolchain to a much slower C toolchain. Moreover, the switch is global process, which means that if we use a single native library, we have to build our entire code base with CGO. Damn. In Rust, this interfacing with native C libraries is far more contained. Libraries such as BindGen or CXX creates, oh, CSX, uh, creates safe wrappers and don't require global changes to our builds. Even better, many libraries come with these wrappers already generated. For example, we ported git interfaces to git2 create. Git2 interfaces with a C library lib git2. I, dude, I used lib git2. It is confusing as sh shit. Just confusing. Underneath the hood, but exposed safe, idiomatic Rust API. This allows us to get the benefit uh, of both Rust and C ecosystems while maintaining a great internal developer experience. Dude, dude, get, lib, get lib, lib, get two. Dude, damn, you should use lib, get three. Internally, uh, we share code bases that work closely with the TurboPack team. For their work, Rust was a clear choice from day one. It, let's see, this meant that we, uh, that as we both continue our work on building tooling for JavaScript. Oh, <laughs> I'm okay. Code bases. We are solving the same problems twice. Once in Go and once in Rust. Absolutely. Getting aligned means both teams can ship faster by sharing development and maintaining of common utilities in our problem space. For instance, we are taking a lot of inspiration from TurboTech team when it comes to file watching so we can build 
a feature for smart hot reloading across workspaces sooner. Oh, yeah. Give me that hot reloading, baby. Rust makes our core team happier. Let's go. That's right. The Rust effect, people. All right. Another great perk. Our team wants to write Rust. It's a language that solves what we care about and brings us joy. Let's go. Rust shilling. 2023 Rust shill. The fact that we enjoy writing Rust is valuable. Uh, is valuable by itself in more ways than one. Happier developers de deliver better software. Your brain is better at complex problem solving when it's happy. If you're, if we're happier while we work, we're much less li less likely to burn out. Absolutely, this is a good call out. Rust efficiency means less energy consumption, letting us do our part in global sustainability. You know, that's just something that people never talk about, which is you should have some level of care, right? You shouldn't just waste resources, you know. And and writing stuff in TypeScript because it's easy, you're just like massively overusing resources. Uh, looking at the past seven years, uh, Stack Overflow survey results, we're not alone. Absolutely. People love Rust. Uh, we also made this choice uh, with future developers of Turbo Repo in mind. Web developers are strongly looking towards Rust as a second language to learn after... <coughs> and making it more accessible for those coming from the... Tooling in... And this enables web-focused developers to be able to get involved, enabling the tur Turbo community to grow. Absolutely. Continuing the migration. We're migrating incrementally, so it's not completely re a complete rewrite overnight. Right now, we have to, what we write. Uh, oh, my goodness. We have what we call Rust Go Rust Sandwich. Mmm, I like a good Rust Go Rust sandwich, you know what I mean? Rust is the entry point, allowing us to choose whether the implementation for a particular command is in Rust or Go. Our Go code base is able to call Rust code, too, giving us paths to keep Go around, but always uh, but always be able to get to Rust. Check out the Turbo FFI crate. Oh, cool. Uh, we're excited about what Rust has done already unlocked for our teams and can't wait to finish the oxidation with carcinization of our... Oh, dude. You know, people... People often mistake that that rust is written after the thing that happens to metal. It's actually about a fungus, okay? The fungus, it's actually, you should be doing cordyceps in here, okay? Making a little cordyceps joke. If you're a high-performance engineering team building uh, developer tooling or doing systems work and you're debating rust or go, we hope our experiences can be helpful reference for you. Those are some big words, I know. Turbo 18, okay, there we go. I think one thing that they're really missing is that they're not showing, they say strong, effectively strong ecosystem and developers really like it and it catches bugs up front. But the fourth one is that I think it's actually exceptionally easy to hire for Rust. I genuinely think if you have a non-Web3 company, you would have a line out the door, out the back, into the parking lot, and into the alley where people are getting shanked just to have a chance to have a Rust job. Honestly, I think people want it bad, and making that choice is a huge hiring multiplier. Whereas right now, if you if you create JavaScript, it's kind of like people expect JavaScript, but no one really wants or loves a job in JavaScript. They want to work in a specific technology. I want to work in React. I'm a React Andy. Do you have React? Is that re is it? Oh, it's not React. I hate your job and everything about you. Right? It's uh, for for JavaScript world. It's all about um, the library. Right, so it's like Svelte, React, Solid. Uh, whereas with Rust, it's like it's it's about Rust the language, which I think makes a huge difference, completely. That's it. You can cut it now. Bye bye. Hey, the name's the Prime Gin. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Got him. Say hi YouTube. Say hi YouTube. Say hi. Say hi. Say nice things. I mean it right now. Say nice things about YouTube right now. Say it. F you no. Know. Say nice things. YouTube, you suck. No, you suck. Nice things about YouTube. Gosh. You guys are jerks. All of you.